Our guest today, folks, is Lisette Hanowitz. Lisette is a candidate for the St. Petersburg City Council. Uh, she moved to St. Petersburg, Florida in 2006 and fell in love with it, as we all do when we get here. It's a beautiful thing. She worked in the Office of State Attorney, uh, State Attorney of the Sixth Judicial Circuit for the United States Attorney's Office, also for the Middle District of Florida. Uh, she started her own practice in 2014. And uh, she uh, is uh, uh, the president of the uh, Crescent Lake uh, Neighborhood Association, and she's uh, uh, been involved with many of uh, the communities, uh, the neighborhoods inside of St. Pete for quite some time. Lisette, welcome to TFNN. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here. It's a beautiful thing. Well, we, we appreciate all the work you've done out there, and I know that you're uh, in a, a battle out here, as all you politicians are in a battle. You get two weeks coming up. Uh, so oh, it's a battle, yeah. <laughs> that's right. I, that's a beautiful thing. Uh, so tell us why we should vote for you. Well, I will tell you, I never even imagined running for office. Um, but, you know, it is something that, you know, life brought me to. Um, I got involved in the Neighborhood Association back in 2016. Um, I had a high-risk pregnancy, and we decided that I'd stay home. I'm a former state and federal prosecutor. As an attorney, um, I will tell you that I saw how my legal skills could help the community in our neighborhood. Yes. I built, yep, I built the organization, the neighborhood organization from the ground up. We have over 25% of our neighborhood involved. That's over 500 households, and through that, I've assisted people on issues, whether it's transportation, uh, safety issues. We engage the community to support our zoned elementary school, Woodlawn Elementary, getting mentors in and building a learning garden. I've been part of uh, the Council of Neighborhood Associations. So I just want to continue the work that I've already been doing in the community on city council. Yeah, yeah and you've definitely built, you know, I, I can tell you from, I build a lot of houses in different communities in the Crescent Lake. What happens, folks, is that Crescent Lake has always been a very strong um, neighborhood, but you really made it a beautiful neighborhood. The porch parties, come on down to St. Pete, folks. It's a beautiful thing. So l let me ask you, what do you think of the challenges right now for St. Petersburg? You know, right now, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm born and raised in Florida. I was born in Tampa, raised in Miami, and life brought me back to the Tampa Bay area in 2004, been in St. Pete since 2006. And I'll tell you, St. Pete's growing. I mean, it's clear. Um, it's been growing for a while. That's, that's a challenge it's going to have. Um, like any growing city, um, you have um, the growing pains. Yes. Um, how do you keep? How do you keep? You know, what makes our city cool and what brought us here in the first place. You know, while it grows, uh, clearly we have the infrastructure issues. Also, and then of course, because of all this growth and everything, we have affordable housing issues. So I think those are the challenges we have right now. And, you know, what has happened, folks, across the country is that single-family housing, uh, you know, everyone has talked about affordable housing forever. I mean, my whole lifetime, that's all I've heard, and nothing ever gets done about it. And one of the big challenges for all communities is that everyone says they want it, but not in my backyard. That's, that's kind of right. the mantra right across the whole country. So what has happened is that in certain communities, they're saying, okay, no more single families. It doesn't have to be single family houses. You can put duplexes, you can put triplexes, you can put quads. And right now, actually last uh, Thursday night, I was listening to that, that council meeting and at the council meeting, they were pushing forward that 90% that of the city of St. Petersburg uh, just may uh, have new zoning. And wh what do you think about that? Well, I will tell you right now, the city's going through the Vision 2050 process, which, you know, it's a planning process that is going to end up making changes to our comprehensive plan and, and in turn our land development regulations. Yes. Um, and what that does is it's going to, you know, they're going to look at the city and see, see where uh, there can be zoning changes to increase density and zoning in certain areas. I don't know if specifically it's going to happen citywide and there's going to be upzoning everywhere. I think, you know, what's going to happen is through the public engagement process, you're gonna start having a better vision of where and how you can do it. And I will tell you, I, I hate the word YIMBY and NIMBY and all that because once you start with names, it shuts people down. So if you go to a neighborhood and, and you tell them, well, you, you guys are just a bunch of NIMBYs and not hear what the issues are, it's a problem. Um, and you have to engage communities to figure out 
what is the concern? Is it parking? Is it gentrification? Is it density? And why? And and have those conversations um, because I've at least I've learned as a neighborhood president listening and engaging people and having a conversation. You'd be surprised where you get to. Um, what you meant in terms of the difficulty and the not in my backyard mentality. I will tell you some of the most established neighborhoods in our city have a variety of housing. They, ha they have a variety of housing, but the fact of the matter is, is that when these regulations basically come out to the community, and you know, they, it was one of these that, yeah, let's say I have an, an ADU, which is a garage right. apartment, folks, okay? Right. And I'm in a certain part of the city, and there is, a, there is plenty of people that even though if I had one, I'd say, no, I don't want anyone else to have one. So, I mean, I, I listen, I, you have challenges. <laughs> all all you oh, city I, councilors I, I, have I, challenges, I, there's no doubt. Uh, you know, I, oh, I, I, I'm just bringing it up because that's what you're going to be walking into, you know, if you happen to win y your seat inside the city council. I, I Trust me, I've walked into it here as a neighborhood president. I will tell you that we had issues in our neighborhood when they built modern homes um, and you know, people, and this is back in 2015, you had 2017. Right, I was there, and I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay, and, and people were up in arms. But I will tell you this, though, Tom, when as soon as you ask people, you know, okay, well, do you want to go ahead and, 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 and change it to a, a local landmark district? You know, if you want to take away their rights, that means you want you want to also change your rights. Oh, well, no, 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 no. People don't want to do that. They That's want to limit what their neighbors right. People want to limit what the neighbors do, but they don't necessarily, if we would have had a vote of the neighborhood where it's like, okay, well, we're going to limit this throughout the neighborhood. You'd be surprised how much people like their property rights. So, so you know, it, it, it is interesting. They always want to tell someone else what to do, but a lot of times they don't want to apply it to themselves. With the zoning issues, I will tell you, um, you're right. I mean, accessory dwelling units are definitely an option that we don't have throughout the city um, because the zoning doesn't allow it throughout the city. And that's a good um, option to have for affordable housing. And not only helps the person that lives in the accessory dwelling unit, and it can conform, by the way, a lot of times people are concerned about the character of the neighborhood. You can make them conform to the character of the neighborhood, but you can have the accessory dwelling unit, what allows for a single person or a college student or even a small family to live there and then it also helps the homeowner right yes. because yes they they collect rent so you know and just like the middle housing you know duplexes and triplexes i've seen some new ones that they have designed where you would not no, right? It's a duplex automatically. Yeah, there's no, there's no doubt. Well, listen, I, I wish you the best. Um, I love how you think, and that must be the the attorney, because 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 no, it's really cool what you said. I mean, the aspect just bringing it back to anyone, not in general. That hey, listen, you know, you know, okay, well, do you want other restrictions on it? You know, that's right. Well, listen, you have a great one, safe one. We wish you luck, and we'd like to have you back. Thank you so much, Tom. Take care. Okay, have a great one. Have a safe one. Okay, bye. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.